so this is february march 2023 paper 2 mcqs total marks 40 time 45 minutes now the question one states substance m is a solid at 30 degrees the substance is heated to 80 and its temperature measured as it cools down to room temperature so the cooling curve is shown before which times is substance m freezing between which times is substance m freezing make sure to underline the important information as you go along the question and also to read it twice or thrice if you don't understand what exactly the question means reading through it the first time now at p we don't know the exactly what the state of the substance is but we know at 30 degrees it is a solid here solid over here if it is solid over here so the next state the next change in state will take place which is solid to liquid a substance first goes from solid to liquid which is melting keep in mind an ice cube whenever discussing this change of state or cooling curve keep in your mind freezing water melting water melting ice in other words so any standard substance will first go from solid to a liquid then from a liquid to a gas except for the substances which sub undergo sublimation now if it is thir at 30 degrees a solid the next change in state will be from solid to liquid and that will occur when we heat it further for example when we take out the ice cube from the freezer in the in the freezer it is below zero or zero degree celsius when we take it out what are we doing we are heating it when we heat it it changes state to liquid and if we keep it above a fire if we heat it more and we heat it up to 100 degrees celsius it will change state again from liquid to gas so in the cooling curve how do you interpret the cooling curve this region whenever there is a flat line this indicates change in state if we move for example we have an, a substance at s we heat it the temperature of the substance increases but when the temperature when the substance is changing its state from solid to liquid over here or liquid to gas whatever it may be general generally speaking so whenever it is changing its state the temperature will stay constant because the energy being provided to it is being absorbed in breaking the bonds between the solid so that it can change its state and temperature will once the state is changed the temperature will increase again for example if you have an ice water mixture you take an ice cube and you keep it in a glass of water after five minutes you see it, some of the ice remains while there is water on the surface of the glass if you check the temperature of the ice it will be zero if you check the temperature of the water melted water it would also be zero as long as is as it's in a mixtured form this is because of the fact that the energy is being used to break the bonds so now we see if we heat it beyond this temperature we see at 40 degrees the change of state is taking place and i just told you that after solid what does it become it becomes a liquid so what was the question stating the question st uh, said where, between which times is substance m freezing meaning from liquid to solid so if this is going in this direction if we are heating the object the substance it is melting and it is going from solid to liquid but the question is a bit twisted they ask us that it is cooling down for example which means that it is going from 80 to below which means that if this is change of state in this direction solid to liquid it means that beyond q the substance is liquid so when from 80 degrees we start to cool the substance down we keep it in a freezer or whatever we are cooling it down and change of state again takes place over here but now what will it 
B it will become a solid because it is now freezing earlier it was it was melting and now it is freezing so freezing occurs between Q and R P to Q we can straight away reject because this region has a gradient this there's a slope so there can't be a change of state as the temperature is constantly changing so P to Q is directly rejected same is for R to S S to T we don't need to discuss because we already discussed Q and S which is melting and freezing but as the question told us that it is solid at 30 degrees next which gas has the fastest rate of diffusion Th now diffusion is a spreading away of particles from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration for example if you spray a perfume the scent is spreaded throughout the room which is the spreading of the perfume particles now the rate of diffusion how fast the diffusion is taking place it depends upon the molecular mass of the gas of the substance of the gas specifically the lower the mass the faster the particles move it is obvious the lower the mass of a person the thinner a person is it is more likely that it, he will run faster than a person who is fatter or obese so we just have to calculate the mr of all the gases and we will know which gas has the lowest mr if we see over here in the periodic table ar is argon in period 3 group 8 it has 39.9 ar c2h6 24 plus 6 30 hcl 36.5 h2s 33 because sulfur has 32 so 32 plus 33 plus 34 so the lower mass is of c2h6 from the face of it it looks that it has many molecules it has many particles or atoms so it would it should have a larger mr but it doesn't so this is the catch over here you have to calculate the mr for all the options never rule out an option unless you calculate the mr for all of it there are two stable isotopes of bromine the mass number of isotope 1 is 79 the mass number of iso isotope 2 is 81 as we know isotopes are the atoms which have the same molecular formula or not molecular formula molecular mass uh, sorry different molecular mass my bad different molecular mass or instead of molecular mass we should say mass number or nucleon number or number of neutrons and same proton number or number of protons so now when we have a theory accumulated with us while reading the question we can now better judge the options correctly the isotopes have the same number of neutrons no this is the basic difference between isotopes that they have a different number of neutrons the isotopes have different chemical properties no as they have the same proton number so they have the same number of electrons so chemical properties depend on number of electrons and being identical they have similar chemical properties the isotopes have different number of protons no the isotopes have the same number of outer electrons they just twisted it by saying outer electrons and it is obvious if the total number of electrons are same Obviously, the shell number, the number of electrons in each shell will also remain the same. Only the mass, primarily only the number of neutrons are changing because of which the mass number is changing because mass number or num nucleon number is number of protons plus neutrons. Now, which statement about ions and ionic bonds is correct? Ions are charged particles which have donated, gained or um, I mean lost an electron or gained an electron. So option A, bromine atoms form negatively charged bromide ions. Okay. Bromine is in group 7. Group 7 has 7 outer electrons. It is a non-metal. It needs only 1 electron to complete its outer shell. So it will have total 8 electrons after taking one as it is gaining an electron it is an anion having 
माइनस वन चार्ज एज देर इज मोर वन मोर इलेक्ट्रॉन दैन टोटल नंबर ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स सिंपली simply speaking it just gain one electron because of which it has a minus one charge so yes this is the correct answer let's look at other options too ionic bonds form between elements in group 7 of the periodic table no ionic bonds only form between group 1 till 3 or the transition elements in groups beyond this there is no ionic bonding between the elements themselves positive ions are formed when atoms lose protons atoms never lose protons and even if they do they wouldn't be positive because when they lose protons they will have a higher overall negative charge due to less protons and more electrons next potassium iodide contains negatively charged potassium ions no potassium is a metal metals are always positively charged and uh, they form cations so pretty quick straight forward next part of the periodic table is shown which type of chemical bonding is present in the oxide of f and in the oxide of g oxide of f f is a metal of course group 2 so it will form an ionic bond with oxygen as a metal plus non metal at this level you should know this is forming a ionic compound so the bonding will be ionic this is group 6 group 6 non metal when non metal form a compound together they are covalently bonded for example sulfur dioxide carbon dioxide if we take an example of a metal we can take sodium sodium oxide sodium oxide is ionic and sulfur dioxide carbon dioxide both are not covalent we can ignore carbon dioxide because group 6 sulfur is present in group 6 you can look at the periodic table and it forms a covalent bond so oxide of f should be ionic and oxide of g should be covalent so all other options are wrong except c element x and y react to form a compound element x loses two electrons which shows us that what the charge will be the charge will be 2 plus because keep in mind metals metals always lose lose electrons and metals always have a positive charge because for example if an element has 9 electrons and 9 protons what will be the net charge this will be cancelled zero charge but if it loses two electrons giving a total of 7 electrons now and 9 protons as proton number does not change so net charge will be 9 minus 7 equals to 2 this is the reason that it will have a charge of 2 plus next element y gains one electron which means it will have a minus one charge reason is the same so what will be the charge on x charge on y and formula of compound charge we already have decided so this and this are correct amongst these two what will be correct is The, we have to find out the formula for the formula we know that the net charge of a of a compound is always zero the when we sum the charges they should be always be zero so if there is if we if, if we accept this as the correct option this is saying that x has 2 which means x has a total of 4 plus charge and it gives a total of 4 electrons four electrons are given by x now y is one only over here so y will only take one of these four electrons so the all the electrons won't be taken by y leaving these three electrons so this is not correct now what about this this states that x gives four electrons or two electrons sorry because x is one over here so x gives two electrons because it has a 2 plus charge and y takes two electrons because y is 2 over here and one y takes one electrons so two y's will take two electrons so two electrons given by one x will be taken by two y's so this is the correct formula for example if you see na2o or or even better if you see 
MgCl2. Magnesium has a plus two charge. Chlorine has a minus one charge. Each magnesium gives two electrons, and there is only one magnesium in the formula. However, the chlorine, one chlorine takes one electrons, and there are two chlorine atoms. So two each taking one makes it zero. So option B. Next, which statement about graphite explains why it is used as an ele electrode? Simple electrolysis question. Uh, this can also come in paper four. You should know this. It contains ions. Not true. It has a giant covalent structure. Although it does have a giant covalent structure, but this is not the reason why it is used as an electrode. This is not the reason why it is used as an electrode. It is a metal. No, it is not a metal. It has a giant covalent structure. It cannot be a metal. It has mobile electrons. It has electrons that can move. Yes, this is the crucial reason because. Uh, for an electrode we want this electrode to conduct electricity if it does not ele conduct electricity the electrolysis won't continue which is why this is necessary giant covalent structure would have been useful if there was something about the boiling point but there is none we don't have any concern for the boiling points over here so in MCQs, you have to be very careful. For a statement being correct, it does not mean, I mean, it is factually correct, but it does not mean that it satisfies the demand of the question. The question is stating, is asking, which statement about graphite explains. Explains means what is the reason? Why is it used as an electrode? Because it has mobile electrons. Mobile electrons means it can conduct electricity. Next. Methane burns in air to form carbon dioxide and water. Burns in air meaning combustion reaction. Burns mean com means combustion reaction with oxygen. What is the balance equation for this reaction? We can ignore all the options and first write the equation ourselves. CH4 plus O2 will give us carbon dioxide plus water. This is the same for all organic compounds, whether it be uh, acid alkane alkene every organic compound reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water the same products so ch4 means methane so one carbon on left hand side one carbon on right hand side carbon are balanced as for hydrogen these are four hydrogens we have to add a two over here four hydrogens now Two, two oxygens over here and two oxygens over here total four oxygens and here we have only two oxygens so if we add a two over here it will be balanced so we can just correspond we can just coincide with the all the mcqs b will be the correct answer 2h2o 2o2 in these type of questions it is better it is much better to first make the calculation yourself now this is a pretty lengthy one it is a pretty tricky mcq my advice is to leave these kind of mcqs which are present i think two or three mcqs you have like these so to leave these mcqs till the end if if you know how to do it by looking at the first glance then most welcome but it is better to leave them till the end because the mark for this and the mark for all other mcqs are the same but this will take up much of your time especially when you're thinking so try to complete other mcqs first and then come back to these types of questions and at least three times you should be reading these questions the equation for the thermal decomposition of sodium hydrogen carbonate is shown the equation is written the mr of sodium hydrogen carbonate is NaHCO3 is 84 the MR of sodium carbonate is 106 all information is crucial nothing is useless in an MCQ in an experiment 2.1 gram of sodium hydrogen carbonate is heated but not all of it decomposes all of the carbon dioxide is collected and me measured at room temperature and pressure the total volume of carbon dioxide produced is 0.21 dmq okay so the volume of one mole of a gas is 24 dm cube which statement is correct 
we don't look at the statements they will make no sense unless we do the calculations ourselves what we have to do is what are the options suggesting the options are two types are of two types one of mass of sodium carbonate so whether we calculate the mass of sodium carbonate so we can tally with the answer with the options and or whether we can calculate the percentage yield of carbon dioxide and tally with the answer so the mr of sodium carbonate is given which hints that there is a chance of its mass being calculated but we cannot say for sure what we have what we can't do however is directly take this as a mole ratio to any over here because this is 2.1 gram and but not all of it decomposes all the sodium hydrogen carbonate is not being used up so we cannot do this we cannot compare the moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate with any of the substances over here yet we first have to know how much of the sodium hydrogen carbonate reacted actually for that we have been given uh, for that we need a mole ratio from the products to reactants to know we know the ratio 2 is to 1 is the ratio but we don't know how many moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate are being reacted so for that we we should have a known quantity over here a known mole over here which they have given us volume of carbon dioxide volume of carbon dioxide is 0.21 the formula is n equals to 0.21 over 24 by calculating this 0.21 divided by 24 Zero point zero zero eight seven five. Number of moles of carbon dioxide. Now the ratio is one is to two. For ex, which means that the moles of carbon dioxide, if we multiply by them by two, this will give us sodium hydrogen carbonate. Multiplying this by two, we get zero point zero one seven five. moles 0.0175 moles of nahco3 now from these moles we can calculate how much how much of the sodium hydrogen carbonate actually reacted because this represents the number of moles which actually reacted so from this we can calculate the mass which reacted so 0.0175 equals to g or we can write m over mr is already given 84 mass is multiplying these two we get multiply by 84 we get 1.47 1.47 which means 1.47 grams from the 2.1 reacted now if we convert this back into if we know the moles for this 0.0175 we know the moles of nahco3 which reacted 0.0175 from this we can calculate the moles of sodium carbonate why do we do this because we want to calculate the mass of sodium carbonate for the mass of sodium carbonate we need the moles of sodium carbonate for moles the ratio is 2 is to 1 so 1 0.0175 is to x x equals to 0.0175 over 2 0.0175 divided by 2 0.00875 which is of course the same as the carbon dioxide moles because the ratio was 1 is to 1 so if we multiply this if we multiply this by 106 we get 0.9275 0.9275 which is 0.93 a one more thing we actually didn't have to do all this once we calculated the moles of carbon dioxide we could right away see the ratio is 1 is to 1 so the number of moles could be calculated directly oh sorry the num the mass should could be calculated directly because when we knew the number of moles 
then the mass could be calculated using the number of moles and the MR 0.93 next question an, an electrolysis experiment is done using carbon electrodes hydrogen and oxygen are formed at the electrodes what is the electrolyte now for recognizing which substance discharges when you need to remember the reactivity series for cations and anions both for cations hydrogen lies pretty down but it is still higher than copper which means that if copper is present in the solution the copper will discharge and hydrogen won't discharge because as you go down the series for example hydrogen is there and cu is here as you go down the series ease of discharge increases which means cu will discharge before h so h will not be produced hydrogen will not be produced at the electrodes which means option a is wrong as for concentrated hcl for the cation part this is fine because hcl is hcl h and h is formed no problem but for chlorine chlorine is above oxygen uh, for hydroxide because water contains water is h2o it contains h and oh ions so we are comparing oh with cl minus because oxygen is formed at the anion at the anode oxygen is formed at the anode which means that oh minus was discharged so o2 was produced there is it, it is a long equation i am just writing o2 over here so we have to compare oh minus with cl ease of discharge increases downwards so oh should have discharged if, even if cl was present in the solution but the catch is this acid is concentrated whenever it is concentrated the cl is the first to discharge so this is also not correct because it is concentrated now this is the reason why you have to read it very con uh, with much concentration next dilute aqueous sodium chloride yes sodium is way above in the reactivity series than hydrogen so ease of discharge of hydrogen is higher as the solution is dilute so chlorine will not discharge as we discussed discussed over here so yes for this uh, there is uh, it is potassium oxide molten so there are no H plus ions in this electrolyte solution over here there is no water so how will H be produced at the cat cathode then if hydrogen is not present in the solution this is why option C is the only 11 same form electrolysis concentrated aqueous copper sulfate is electrolyzed using copper electrodes which ionic half equation describes the reaction taking place at the cathode at the cathode we know the cation is discharged cations have lost their electrons initially that is why they have become an ion so what happens to copper as copper is the lowest in the reactivity series because here what ions do we have we have h plus ions talking about cations because they were asking about cathode and cu2 plus so as i explained earlier cu is way below which is why cu will discharge better than h plus so this option is incorrect this option is incorrect because it takes place at the anode now between these two what do we have to write i told you the metals become ions by giving away electrons and for them to be discharged and lose their charge they have to gain back those two electrons so cu2 plus will gain two electrons to become cu option d when powdered sodium carbonate powdered and aqueous ethanoic acid are mixed the temperature of the mixture falls the temperature of the mixture falls means that the reaction is absorbing energy this type of reaction is endothermic as it is absorbing energy this is why the temperature of the mixture is falling and the delta h of this is positive 
so straight away we can accumulate our thought process and thoughts and syllabus coursework before reading the options but still we will give a read to all the options always but here it is obvious delta h cannot be negative while the reaction is endothermic contradictory the reaction is not exothermic so c and d are wrong next magnesium powder reacts with an excess of dilute hcl to produce hydrogen gas magnesium plus hcl to produce mgcl2 plus h2 the smaller the this is about rate of reaction by the way the smaller the particles of magnesium powder the more slowly the hydrogen is produced no surface area decreases when smaller particles are reduced so rate increases rate increases product formation rate b also increases the higher the temperature the faster the magnesium powder disappears yes magnesium powder is a reactant and the faster the reactant disappears meaning the rate of the reaction is faster the lower the concentration of dilute hcl the faster the rate of the reaction no more concentrated acid results in a faster rate of reaction next the faster the magnesium powder disappears the faster the rate of reaction yes 2 and 4 i already explained this next the reaction between two aqueous compounds x and y is slow and exothermic exothermic the graph shows how the rate of this reaction changes with time the activation energy decreases we have nothing to suggest this we can't make assumptions on our own either we sh- the assumption should be supported by theory knowledge or the information provided in the question next the speed of the molecules of x and y decreases no evidence to suggest this because uh the we have not been provided with the information regarding energy and secondly it is an exothermic reaction so it is likely that it will lose energy it will increase the temperature of the surrounding so this means that the temperature will go down and the speed does increase decrease with time but here the thing is the concentration of both x and y is decreasing as concentration decreases the rate also decreases because over here the rate the rate of change of rate the rate is decreasing over here also and over here also but what is the difference here the rate is decreasing at a much faster rate and here at a much lower rate this suggests that it has something to do with the concentration of the reactant because as the reaction progresses the concentration decreases so only option 3 and mcq d next hydrogen reacts with iodine to form hydrogen iodide which explain why the reaction is faster when the pressure is increased at constant temperature when the pressure is increased the particles are moved closer together re- reducing the volume so molecules are not moving faster as temperature is constant pressure has no influence on movement of molecules higher pressure more of the molecules have the required activation energy again this is related to temperature the molecules are closer together yes and being closer together they have a higher chance of colliding more frequently so yes we can just first we should read the question ammonium sulfate is used as a fertilizer it is made from ammonia and sulfuric acid the dash is made by the dash process in which dash is used as a catalyst which words complete gaps 1 2 and 3 now we can just fit in everything and check if it is correct or not the ammonia okay is made by the dash process contact process no haber process yes so option a is wrong because it says contact contact process is for h2so4 Haber's process, yes, up till here it is correct. But next process in which dash is used as a catalyst. The catalyst for Haber process is iron, iron, not vanadium. Vanadium is for contact process for sulfuric acid. So this is also incorrect. Next is sulfuric acid produced by the process. Which process? Contact or Haber? Contact, not Haber. So this is wrong. And the catalyst used is also vanadium five oxide. The reversible reaction. shown takes place in a closed system at constant temperature when the reaction has reached equilibrium more t is added more t is added now the reaction always moves from the equilibrium favors the side with lower concentration which means if i increase the concentration over here the reaction will move here if i increase the concentration here the reaction will move over here which is obvious so as t is increased the reaction equilibrium will shift towards left so these will decrease in concentration and these will start to increase so the answer will be p q and r 
not s because the equilibrium should is shifting on left so s will not increase it will decrease in which equation is the underlying substance acting as a reducing agent reducing agent is a substance which itself is oxidized and oxidizing agent is which itself is reduced so oxidized means gain of oxygen reduce means loss of oxygen now once we have this all together we can now look at the question much more easily reducing agent means it is itself oxidized and oxidized means it is gaining oxygen so whichever compound is gaining an oxygen we should know that the that is the correct option so we will start from d cao calcium oxide plus water is calcium hydroxide it is gaining a hydrogen not an oxygen more hydrogen is being gained than hydro than oxygen secondly we can also look at the oxidation state which will tell us that this is not correct as over here oxygen has minus 1 oxidation state calcium has plus 1 because the overall oxidation state should be zero of a neutral compound over here what happens is oh has a minus 1 oxidation state two oh minuses will have two so it has plus 2 but we are concerned about oxygen so if you look at option c same is happening the oxygen is going away so it is being reduced itself over here even though calcium is being oxidized but it is not a reducing agent the calcium oxide itself completely is not a reducing agent we cannot look at the oxidation state over here directly because the underlying statement is not only calcium it is the entire compound the entire compound here is zero and over here also zero so individual oxidation states will not be looked at so it's better to just look at the gain and loss of hydrogen and oxygen one more thing oxidization is gain of oxygen or loss of hydrogen complete opposite and reduction is gain of hydrogen so keeping this in mind we can now move forward this is also not correct as it is losing the oxygen as for b it is also losing one oxygen it is being reduced only a is correct as it is initially co now it gains another oxygen co2 an aqueous solution reacts with a solid aqueous solution reacts with a solid the products are an alkaline gas a salt and water this is from acid bases and salts we know that alkaline gas we have two gases majorly which are produced when this type of reaction takes place which are carbon dioxide and ammonia this is acidic this is alkaline this is produced whenever a base or an alkali we can say reacts with a nitrate salt salt contain containing no3 always ammonia is produced salt is produced and water is produced as for carbon dioxide whenever acid is reacted with carbonate containing salt carbon dioxide plus salt plus water is produced okay so if the solid is magnesium carbonate an aqueous solution is sodium hydroxide the problem is this is an alkali oh minus so it won't react and produce carbon dioxide next or even if it does produce carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is not an alkaline gas so all carbonates will produce maximum carbon dioxide gas which is acidic we want the gas which is alkaline so not right one correction one little correction whenever acid reacts with ammonium not carbonate not nitrate ammonium ammonium ion ammonium ion it could be any salt containing ammonium ion ammonium chloride ammonium bromide ammonium fluoride anything ammonium uh, anything it can be anything ammonium 
fluoride anything so it will produce ammonia salt and water so we will only look at the options with ammonium c and d either c either d and now we have a reaction over here it is an alkali and or base which reacts with ammonium salt to produce ammonia gas so not an acid this is an acid this is a base so only option d is correct next butanoic acid partially dissociates in an aqueous solution this is a weak acid it can all you can all also have a question asking you to state what is a weak acid and explain so a weak acid is which partially dissociates in an aqueous solution weak acid it is a weak acid it should have a ph of near 7 not 3 not 3 straight away wrong not 8 as 8 is weakly alkaline 7 till 14 is alkaline not 10 and this is strongly alkaline only this next is thymolphthalene effect on thymolphthalene blue to colorless it goes blue to colorless in acids next copper sulfate is produced by adding excess copper carbonate copper carbonate to sulfuric acid why is an excess of copper to carbonate added to ensure all the copper carbonate has reacted never because adding an excess means that all of it won't react it is an excess more than it is required next to ensure all the sulfuric acid has reacted yes this is excess so that all of this can react and this does not finish before all of this has reacted next to increase the rate of the reaction no volume has no effect on rate of reaction concentration does have an effect higher concentration has higher rate of reaction this is many things which students confuse that volume does not have an effect concentration has an effect these are two different things and excess means higher volume so not correct to increase the amount of copper to sulfate produced no it won't that's not the case over here the reaction excess does not have any significance except for this because the excess means that it will not take part in the reaction so how will it affect the amount of copper to sulfate produced next periodic table again part of the periodic table is shown which element has two electrons in its outer shell and three electron shells now th there are two two things this is the group number vertically looking at group one two and three four five six seven eight another thing is a period the rows one two three four so the number of outer shell number of outer shell electrons is equals to the group number for example group six will have six outer electrons in its last shell very shell and number of shells depends on the number of periods first period will have only one occupied shell second period will have two occupied shell period three will have three occupied shells so as far as this condition is concerned three electron shells it is fulfilled by d and c both but it should have two electrons in its outer shell meaning it should be of group two so option c next is Elements in group 1 and 2 show the same trends in the reaction with water and in their density. This is basically trying to trick you because you have studied group 1 in your syllabus. Group 1, group 7, transition elements, their trends, their reactivity trends, everything. So what they do is they say group 2 instead of group 1 and tell you that they have the same properties. So whatever you have studied for group 1 will follow along for group 2. So which row shows the properties of how shows how the properties of barium compare with calcium? So property down the group, we have to look at the trends down the group. Barium is below calcium in the periodic table. Barium is below. So barium sh barium should has should have a higher reactivity or lower higher reactivity because it can lose electrons much more easily than calcium so reactivity will be fast reactivity increase means reaction will be faster a or b this is wrong density will be higher or lower you just have to remember the trend the density increases the melting point boiling point increase decrease the density increases 
विच पेयर ऑफ कंपाउंड शो अ ट्रांजिशन एलिमेंट इन टू डिफरेंट ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट ट्रांजिशन एलिमेंट इन टू डिफरेंट ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट जस्ट हैव टू कैलकुलेट द ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट फॉर ईच कंपाउंड फर्स्ट वी स्टार्ट विद द सिंपलर लुकिंग कंपाउंड एस हैज माइनस टू जेड एन हैज प्लस टू विच मीन्स दैट इट इज प्लस टू ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट ओवर हीयर इन हीयर ऑक्सीजन ऑक्सीजन हैज माइनस एट सल्फर हैज माइनस टू सो टोटल माइनस टेन एंड जिंक शुड हैव प्लस टेन नाउ हाउ डू यू कैलकुलेट ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट एक्चुअली द न्यूट्रल कंपाउंड इज ऑलवेज इक्वल्स टू जीरो द टोटल ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट सो जेड एन एस इफ आई नो सल्फर इज इन ग्रुप सिक्स इट हैज ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट ऑफ सेम एज ऑक्सीजन माइनस टू नाउ वॉट यू हैव टू डू इज वी हैव टू सी माइनस टू प्लस एक्स इक्वल्स टू जीरो एक्स इक्वल्स टू टू द इक्वल टू इज जीरो इट इज इक्वल टू जीरो नेक्स्ट सो लेट्स चेक आउट अदर ऑप्शन एज वेल कॉपर सी यू टू ओ एंड सी यू सी ओ थ्री इन हीयर ऑक्सीजन हैज माइनस टू सो वन कॉपर शुड हैव प्लस वन बिकॉज टू कॉपर हैव प्लस टू टू काउंटर दिस माइनस टू फॉर बींग जीरो दिस इज वाई In copper carbonate, carbonate entirely it has minus one, so copper will also have minus one. Same in here and same in here. So option C seems to be correct as for now. Next question twenty five. Which description of brass is correct? A compound of copper and zinc. a compound of copper and tin a com mixture of copper and zinc a mixture of copper and tin compound is something which has been reacted completely with it has unique properties it has unique properties uh, plus uh, it has it is pure and it has reacted completely while a mixture is something which has not been chemically combined for example if you mix sand in water it is just a mixture but if you mix salt in water it has it is a solution but it is still not a compound a compound is when you mix two things sodium and oxygen to produce a, an entirely different thing for example if you mix hydrogen and oxygen you react them both are gases they produce water which is a liquid completely different properties so first you have to know which element make up brass we know it is copper and zinc next we know that alloy this is an alloy and alloys are not compounds alloys are mixtures because they have not chemically combined i would like to revisit this question once more to be sure let's look at option b again c c u 2 o o has minus 2 charge so plus x is of copper and 2 copper so 2x equals to 0 2x equals to minus 2 x equals to minus 1 next is c c u c o 3 so carbonate has a charge of 2 minus yes this is a mistake i made and copper should have a charge of plus 2 to make it zero so different oxidation state as for c sulfur and zinc so sulfur is minus 2 zinc is plus 2 so okay plus 2 is zinc oxidation state in zinc sulfide now zinc sulfate sulfate has a charge of 2 minus to make it zero zinc should also have 2 plus so this is zero so oxidation state in both zinc sulfide and zinc sulfate zinc has oxidation state of 2 plus the mistake i did earlier was i counted this separately this is not separately done even if it is done separately then sulfur is 
not minus two then. Okay, because sulfur dioxide uh, sulfate itself is two minus. As oxygen is minus two times eight four, giving you minus eight, and sulfur is plus six in this case. In this case, because sulfur does not have a fixed oxidation state. So option B is correct, as we are completely sure about it. You can check this and this too, but this is smart as you have to save time. You don't have an hour or more than an hour. You only have 45 minutes. You have to see about the simpler options, and if they are correct, you're good to go. Next, what is the symbol of the metal used in the manufacture of aircraft because of its low density? Pure theory from metals chapter. Aluminum is lightweight, so it is used in aircraft, and it has a low density, of course. Next, which substances react to form hydrogen gas? Calcium and water. Yes, calcium plus water is calcium hydroxide plus hydrogen. Silver and dilute hydrochloric acid. No, in the reactivity series, you have to remember the reactivity series. It is please. The mnemonic we have is please send cats, monkeys, zebras. Please send cat, monkeys, zebras in large, heavy cages. Make sure, sure, guarded. Now, what does this mean? This means potassium, which has formula K. This means sodium, which has Na. This is calcium. This is magnesium. This is zinc this is iron this is lead this is hydrogen this is copper so and this is please send monkeys in large heavy cages make sure guarded this is silver this is mercury and gold next so silver is below hydrogen so it won't displace hydrogen so this reaction will not occur next magnesium is steam yes we know magnesium has two reactions with water one with steam which will produce mgo plus h2 one with cold water which is the same as the calcium one zinc and hydrochloric acid yes zinc is above it so it will di displace so one two and four so option sorry one three and four so option a is correct Coke and limestone are two raw materials used in the extraction of iron from hematite. Which type of reaction occurs when each substance is heated during the process? Redox, coke. The coke, the reaction through which coke uh, undergoes is coke is basically carbon. This is carbon plus oxygen combustion reaction CO2. In here, it is zero oxidation state. Zero oxidation state. Here, one oxygen has minus two. Two oxygen has minus four. To make it zero, carbon has plus four. So carbon is oxidized, oxygen is reduced, redox reaction. Option one and two correct. Limestone. Limestone is basically carb calcium carbonate. It is going through thermal decomposition as it forms calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. So. this is as you know thermal decomposition as it has decomposed so option a is correct this is not detox next some combustion reaction produce pollutant gases which reactions produce a pollutant gas that is not present in clean air so in here carbon monoxide is produced it is not present in clean air so yes next is water vapor is being produced it is already present in air so not correct here also carbon dioxide is a pollutant yes water is first of all not a pollutant gas so option 2 doesn't count entirely as for option 3 carbon dioxide is a pollutant true it causes global warming it is a greenhouse gas but the thing is that it is already present in clean air as if you know the percentage composition it is 78% nitrogen 21% oxygen 0.4% carbon dioxide and next is uh, noble gases next is 
oxides of nitrogen yes this is also a pollutant and it is not present already in gas nitrogen is present but this is not present so first three and four sorry this was wrong we proved that it is already present in air 0 0.4 percent so this is wrong two and four one and four sorry we already take one and four one mole of alkane Y produces 72 dm cube of carbon dioxide when burned in excess oxygen measured at room temperature and pressure. What is Y? Now, 72 dm cube of carbon dioxide. This volume is given to us because we can calculate moles with this 72 over 24, which will be 1 to 3. 3 moles of carbon dioxide so which alkane when reacted with oxygen will produce 3 moles of carbon dioxide plus water so this means that alkane which we choose over here should have 3 carbon atoms no need to lo go in longer conversation 3 carbon atoms because 3 moles of carbon dioxide is produced so 3 carbon atoms are present not here not here not here over here only Otherwise, what you could do was keep place everyone in place of Y one by one and check which produces three moles of carbon dioxide according to the balance equation. But this would obviously take much of your time. Next, the structure of organic compound X is shown. This is a functional group of ester. You can recognize it is an ester. Now, the names are given. What is X? We know that this is the alcohol part and the basic thing which we use to judge is the number of carbon atoms this is acid part from the structure we know that the the, the one containing double bond carbon and oxygen is the acid so this is the acid and this is the alcohol what happens is c c o o h c h 3 and c h 3 o h OH. What happens is the OH from here and O from here. Sorry, hey, XO. Hey, 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 hey. The OH from here and hydrogen from here. They both eliminate to form water, and an esterification, esterification, condensation reaction takes place. Esterification is a better word, and this is formed. 1, 2, 3 carbons, 1, 2, 3 carbons. So, the acid part containing carbon has 2 carbon atoms and the alcohol part contains only 1 carbon. So, the alcohol part should have a methyl and the acid part should have an ethanoid. So, option C. No need to look too much at the options. What is the structural formula of the compound form in the addition reaction of a propene with bromine? Now, at first glance, all would seem correct to you, all of the options. But what is the catch over here? The catch is that propene can be drawn like this or like this, same thing. H, 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 and H. This is a propene. Now, when bromine reacts, bromine is a diatomic, bromine reacts. One bromine comes with this and or maybe it is better here. One bromine comes here and one bromine comes here as this double bond is broken. So this means that both bromines should be on adjacent carbon atoms. Which is only present in A as we can draw out the structures. C, C, B, R, C, H, H, B, R. So as you can see, B, R is present on this carbon and on the carbon adjacent, which means the double bond was present over here. As for this, you can see that this structure will be this. C, H, H, C, H, H, B, R. So how can this be over here and this be over here? What Where was the double bond exactly present? You get the point. So option A is correct. Next. 
Ethanol is produced industrially by fermentation and also by a catalyzed addition reaction involving steam. Which row describes one advantage of each process? Fermentation and involving steam. The reactant uses renewable. Yes, yeast is used. So it is renewable A and B. It is not a rapid reaction. It is really slow. Next, it requires little energy. No, as it is involving steam. So higher temperature. So only option A is correct. It is a, even if you don't know sometimes what does this mean or is it true or not, you are not confirmed. Then you can always eliminate the wrong option, which is obvious. Next, carboxylic acid react with alcohols when warm with an acid catalyst. This is exactly what we did over here. An ester is formed when an alcohol and acid react in the presence of an acid catalyst which is H2SO4 or any inorganic acid for this level next now nylon which is a polymer formed by condensation polymerization which structure represents nylon for this we have to know the monomer of nylon nylon consists of two different monomers one is dicarboxylic acid di means two which means two acid acid functional groups on either side and one amine diamine amine is this part so when these two combine similar to the esterification reaction takes place this entirely goes beside this and what happens is this is disappeared and it is like this so where is this present non this this is pretty tricky as at first glance you can be mistaken but the point is this states that both carboxylic acid and amine are present on one single chain but which is not true this is true for pet terephthalic acid or no, not terephthalic acid PET has a longer name you don't know that you don't you shouldn't know that so this is not correct because it contains NH2 both and COOH on one single chain uh, this is wrong for the same reason it has an alternating arrangement as for this this is correct because you can see carbon ca uh, acid acid amine amine As for D, it is wrong because what what's wrong over here? The shaded uh, the the shaded is given to the acid group here here, but over here the shaded is given to amine once, but then where is the repeat unit over here or after this? as you can see over here these are two shaded regions chains and two separate uh, two unshaded over here one shaded uh, one unshaded one shaded okay and one shaded and here it, it ended what is the difference basically the difference is acid group okay amine group okay over here amine group okay this is completely identical the difference is of this o there should be no o when we do it there was no o over here it doesn't have to do with uh, particularly about shading the, the shading just tells you that there is some difference about the repeat units the primary difference is about the oxygen there is no oxygen over here and originally we didn't have an oxygen over here this is not an ester next 37 2 gram of powdered calcium carbonate is added to 50 cm cube of hydrochloric acid which apparatus is used to measure these quantities of calcium carbonate and hcl pretty easy pipette cannot be used pipette is for volume we have mass for balance hcl for 50 cm cube thermometer is temperature you can't go wrong with this one so only a is the correct option next chromatography 
the diagram shows a chromatogram obtained from the colors of three different sweets x y and z how many different red dyes are present in the sweets now the thing which you have to remember is the dots represent which are coinciding with each other represent that there are from the same they are the same basically they are not different they are pure for example this means that this is one sweet uh, this is one red dye and the, this is another red dye one red dye second red dye this is not separate one two three four it's not like that why because they have the same position had this red been here this red been over here okay and this red been over here over here not coinciding with each other this is basically the rf value you can say or the re or the distance traveled by the solution so how many different red dyes are present one and two next a mixture contains sand which is insoluble which should strike again strike right away filtration and aqueous solution of sodium chloride salt soluble which process are used to obtain a sample of solid sand and a sample of solid sodium chloride from the mixture crystallization if we do crystallization first we will lose the sand or maybe we will not lose the sand basically we will lose the water and the crystallization in crystallization the 75 percent of the water is evaporated so the sand and salt will not be separated they will still be present in the 25 percent solution next if we evaporate first we will for again when the water evaporates down below we will have salt and sand both so wrong filtration we filtrate first we get the sand in the filter paper followed by crystallization we crystallize to get the soluble salt yes simple distillation distillation has nothing to do with this because distillation will separate the water itself and not the solids next a student tests an unknown compound m the compound produces a lilac flame using a flame test lilac flame is produced with potassium sodium produces a yellow flame bright yellow produces a gas which turns lime water cloudy co2 when dilute hcl is added this is the test for carbon dioxide gas again notes for qualitative analysis you will find in your syllabus which will give you all the information on the tests for cations anions gases everything what is m so carbon dioxide is released when hcl is added we already discussed in one of the questions that when acid is added to a carbonate salt carbon dioxide is released so either this or either this but the flame test suggests that it is potassium because of the lilac so option d we have completed the paper thank you